What did you think about Bektik when they when they threw that name at you? I, honestly, it wasn't a guy I was that I had in mind when when I was, you know, kind of visualizing like who will I be fighting next and you know how I'm going to climb the rankings and whatnot. But when they offered Bektik, I actually got that was really you know got me really excited because he's a he's a gamer man. He comes hard. He comes forward and and for a long time he was a guy that people looked at and like this guy could be a you know, future title contender, future champion, and he, he definitely brings it. He's had a few tough losses, obviously, you know, to good guys, Josh Emmett, Darren Elkins recently, and, um, but, you know, that doesn't take anything away from the guy, and I'm expecting, you know, the best Mursad Bektik there is, so I can't wait to go out there and obviously beat him and, you know, get my hand raised and move myself up the rankings. Are you looking uh, for anything in particular out of, uh, out of your matchups at this point like is it just a, a number or is it is it like in this case you know you say that that the guy is is still tough even though he's had a couple losses like what what do you want most out of a matchup right now for me you know i i want to i want exciting fights you know I, I i get i get the rankings obviously i'm super excited you know this is my opportunity to make it into the rankings you know in the top 15 in the world it's always been a goal of mine um the overall goal is obviously to be the champion um but for me, matchup-wise, I like stylistic, you know, exciting fights because that's what the fans like, that's what the matchmakers like, that's what, you know, the company likes. And I think that's, that's what I need right now to, to grow, you know, not only as a fighter, but grow my brand, grow my marketing team, um, and grow my fan base. And, you know, I think I go out there, I always put it on the line, I fight hard, and, you know, I always you know, try to make an exciting fight. So someone like Mursad, I think, is going to come out there, you know, try to bring it as well and be a really fun fight. What do you mean by try to try to bring it? Like, why do you think he makes for an exciting stylistic matchup? I don't know, because if I watch his fights, he just, he tries, like, he puts effort. Like, he, he goes out there, he throws 100%, and that's kind of what I do. I go out there and I try to freaking knock the guy's head off. And, you know, some... What I mean by that is, you know, you got some fighters out there who might just, you know, try to hit and run, point fight, and just win rounds. And, you know, I, he comes from a smart team, don't get me wrong. You know, for us as a hobby, they're very smart in game planning, and they're going to do everything they can to win. But, you know, I think it's just in him to, you know, make an exciting fight, and it's in me as well. So, you know. I feel like there's like... Uh... You're, I, I feel like you're in a really exciting division right now. In fact, I put out yeah. that I, it's my favorite division right now in the UFC, just in terms yeah. of all the players in there, which is like great because you're in an exciting division, but it also can be harder to stand out, right? Yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel that way, that, that it's, it's difficult to kind of rise to the, to the top when you've got so many different exciting players uh, at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of why I fight the way I do. You know, I, have a, I kind of have a chip on my shoulder. You know, I feel like... Every time I fight, like I'm fighting for, fighting to earn some respect. You know, I, I, I'm not saying I feel disrespected, but I sometimes feel I get overlooked. And you know, it's not a bad thing. You know, I'm gonna fly under the radar, and you know, keep getting W's. But um, I think it's time. You know, I think time people, you know, tune into Danny Gay, and you know, see what I'm about. You know, I, I'm not just a, just a manager. I'm a badass fighter as well. And you know, I want to show the world that you know, I'm. You know, champion mentality, and you know, I can I can do it. So it's always kind of fun in like January. You get to like uh, you know, everyone's kind of uh, sort of make predictions on the year. You know, yeah. can you kind of uh, make your prediction, Dan Ige's prediction, on how the featherweight division sort of settles out over the course of the next twelve months? I mean, Volkanovski claiming the belt, you yeah. know, late last year. Yeah. Holloway's there. Ortega, you know, is 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 expected to come back. Yair Zabit. A lot of different names in there. How do you think it all kind of unfolds over the next 12 months? And who do you think are the guys who are, are legit, like the legit guys who will rise to the top? I mean, everyone's legit at this point. Uh, it's really hard to say. I'm so, I'm so focused on what I'm doing right now that, um, you know, it, there's crazy fights out there. Everyone's, you know, winning, losing. Uh, there's guys moving up divisions, guys going down divisions, and uh, you know, like you said, it's an exciting time. Um, for me, I personally see myself fighting three times this year. You know, I want to make my winning streak. I want to get a seven-fight winning streak. That's been a big goal of mine. Um, and you know, knock on the title challenging door myself, and 
you know, now we have a new champion, Volkanovski. I've always kind of, you know, pictured myself fighting that guy. I don't know why. It just, he, he uh, you know, nothing personal. I've, you know, I've met him a few times. He's a nice guy, but I've just, I've seen myself fighting him for whatever reason, you know, because he's, 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 he's legit, man. You know, he just beat the best in the world. He beat Max Holloway and that's, and, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, Max isn't, Max is 28 years old. He's still, you know, still coming for that belt as well. So Volkanovski's got two hungry Hawaiians coming after him. Mm. And, uh, but it's, it's definitely an exciting time. There's a lot of good guys out there. Um, Sadiq Yusuf, he just got a big win over Andre Feely. That's another guy coming up. He's hungry, you know, young kid from Nigeria, tough. Um, Shane Burgos, tough dude, just uh, won a pretty big fight at Madison Square Garden. Uh, it's a bunch of good guys, man. The list goes on. And you fought some good guys. I mean, I was looking at the guys that you fought so yeah. far in your UFC career. Yeah. Do you know what their record is combined? No. <laughs> Put out a guess. I, I don't know their combined records, but I do know this. Like, they, they weren't the biggest names, but every guy I fought has been a champion in a, you know, a previous organization. Danny mm -hmm. Henry was a champion. Uh, what was the EFC is like a South South Africa, you know, he was a world champion there. Uh, Kevin Aguilar, uh, LFA world champion, defending champion, you know, he was legit. That guy was 17 and one when I fought him. His one loss was, you know, he got TKO by Leonard Garcia and it was like, some say it could have got stopped early, you know, but mm -hmm. like that guy is freaking tough. Um, Jordan Griffin, king of the cage uh, champion. I think he was a two division champion, king of the cage. And, uh, Julio Arce, obviously, he beat me in my debut, but he was a champion as well. Mm -hmm. And every guy I fought has been a champion, so, you know, I'm not getting easy fights around here. Yeah, what, what do you chalk that up to? I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like, you know, getting wins over these guys is just only making me better. You know, I, I'm, I'm, they have so much experience in this game, and then for me to go in there and fight them and, you know, some, I, I tr obviously, I try to finish every fight I, I go into, you know, I come out are in the first round. I'll try to get a first round finish if I can, but you know, I, I, I definitely appreciate those three round fights because I feel like I gain so much knowledge. You know, this last fight with Kevin Aguilar was like three round, it was a war. And I, I gained so much knowledge from that fight and I really can't wait to show how much I've improved since then. And I feel like I've taken, every time I fight a guy, I feel like I just take their experience and, um, you know, I fought, I, fought, I fought the best guys in the world, and, I, and I'm willing to prove that I am the best in the world. So. When you look at the two losses that Bechtick has had to Elkins and to Josh Emmett, do you see any, like, uh, is there any tie between them? Like, why did he lose those fights? Yeah, um, slightly different. There were two different fights. So Elkins, you know, I, I love watching that fight because, you know, you can see the point where Mursad gives up. And that's, I feed, I feed off that. Like, I... Uh, gets me so excited and just I'm mean, freaking got goosebumps right now like I, I, th I think about that and when I think about guys breaking it just gives me this crazy like surging energy and that's what I that's what I look to do when I go in fights I want to break guys I'm, I want to I want to take something away from them I don't know how I want to say I want to take their soul like I really feel it and that's I want to demoralize someone I want to embarrass them that's what I do when I try to fight. Obviously, you know, knockouts are nice, you know, chokes are nice, but I want to demoralize, you know, my opponent when he steps in front of me. So um, definitely see that in Mursad. You know, he comes out hard, but I, I feel when the going gets hard for him, you know, that's when he starts to break down a little bit. And for me, I'm the opposite. You know, I, I come out hard. And I may step off the gas a little bit, but when the going gets hard, when when things get hard is when I, you know, I feed off that. I, I feed off, you know, adversity. I feed off just, you know, pushing through that mental barrier. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's where I, I'm going to win this fight. Mm. Um, you talked about, uh, you know, some of the time that you've had in between fights and that's it allowed you to get better. And I've seen you at some different gyms. You've, it yeah. seems like you've had some different training opportunities. Yeah. What, what has the last six months been like just in terms of uh, your growth and, and where you've gotten some of those opportunities to, to, to get work in? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy how, how fast time has passed by. Um, I was expecting to fight one more time last year. But in the meantime, I, I 
I didn't take a break, you know, I was traveling, you know, working uh, with different gyms, different fighters. Obviously with my management career, I, I was um, out in Abu Dhabi helping Khabib get ready for his fight. I went out to AKA, helped him for a little bit. Um, just being around these guys, high level guys, you know, learning from them, learning, watching, you know, guys like Khabib or Justin Gagey or Frankie Edgar or Kamara Usman and just how they prepare and how they prepare mentally. And um, I feel like I, I, I take that all in. I observe everything, you know, all the way leading up to the fight and how they, you know, how each guy is fight week. How do they prepare mentally? And I kind of take little things here and there, here and there. And I, I you know, develop myself. And so I have, I've grown a tremendous amount, you know, from my last fight, you know, in the past eight months. Um, I, you know, I just can't wait to show it. I'm super excited. You got any, uh, anything good behind the scenes from any of those guys that you just mentioned? I mean, people ask me about, uh, you know, some things that happen that fans or, you know, cameras don't catch and you're, you're around these guys, you know, I mean, is there anything that sticks out about any of those guys that you just mentioned? Well, I mean, Khabib's a guy like for sure, like I, it's, one of the biggest role models, you know, in my life, especially in, you know, he's a guy that I could say, truly, I could say this, that he never changed, you know, money didn't change him. The belt and money will change a lot of people. And that's one guy, he's the same guy from when I first ever met him. Like, I, I met him maybe four years ago. I didn't know him, but uh, we were at Ali's house and he just came up to me, he's like, where are you from? And I told him I was from Hawaii and then he just picked up a single leg and we started wrestling in the parking lot. He was a super, you know, it was kind of scary, <laughs> but it was cool. We wrestled and then we just became friends. And, you know, he's the same guy then that, that he is now. And now he's, you know, he's got obviously millions of dollars. He's a champion, but he, he's, a, he's a man of, you know, he's, he has a heart of gold, dude. And he won't go out and tell people this, but like I've seen him, you know, just give money to charities, build wells in Africa. And it's not like, you know, he doesn't do it for the clout. He's just out there to do it for the, you know, his own, his own heart and, you know, God willing that, you know, they'll, he's, he, he's just, he's blessed, man. And mm -hmm. uh, he's definitely a guy I, I look up to a lot. And Usman too, Usman's a really, you know, class act guy and uh, definitely a, you know, ama amazing champion, you know, he's not out there. I feel like the, nowadays everyone's so into the, the trash talk and, you know, just, smashing each other and trashing each other and it's just it's kind of what it's turned into but you know there's there's still good guys out there that you know you know could be good leaders and you know someone else that role models that you know people could look up to and you know they deserve to be champions so hmm. well that actually feeds into my last question uh, and not necessarily a trash talk question but you go into houston and, and you beat mersad should we expect you to, to have a name on your mind or is it just next up uh, I mean, at this point, yeah, let's, I have a tough, you know, a tough fight in front of me and I just want to keep moving up, you know, I want to move towards that, 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 that goal of mine. I want to win three times, you know, and I feel like a seven fight win streak, eight fight win streak is really hard to deny, you know, to get that belt. You know, the one guy I want right now is Volkanovski. He has the belt. Uh, I have to earn it though. And so it, it really doesn't matter who I fight at this point. Um, you know, aside from marketing and, you know, trash talk and making big fights, I, I, I need W's. That's what it comes down to. And um, those W's are, are what's gonna earn me a title shot. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.